this is the, that's the reason why I started doing motivational speaking. That's why I started. I wrote the book, Average is Failure, but it all comes back down to um, I really feel like God has called all of us to maximize like our potential while we're down here on this earth. Like when you read stories of like Daniel, like we always talk about the books of Revelation and the book of Daniel, and we only focus on like just the specific prophetic part. But if you go back to like the book of Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah is the one that kind of prophesied what would happen in Daniel's time. And one of the specific things that we often overlook is that he told, he told the people, listen, y'all are going to be captured by Babylon. But listen, don't even try to fight against it. Your only job is to do and live excellently there. And even inside of Babylon, you will still continue to prosper and you will build houses, etc., etc. right? And then if you look at the life of Daniel, you can see that Daniel actually believed that because Daniel lived with excellence. And even for him being in a pagan nation, so to speak, he still prospered, you know. Um, and, other, and the Hebrew boys and others who did what God told them to do still prospered. And one of the things that's beautiful about his story is that it says that because he lived, it, it said that he, he lived excellently, so excellent to the point that the only reason why, the only thing they could find against him to begin persecuting him was the fact that he served his God. And the only reason why they wanted to persecute him was because of the favor that he was being shown. And so sometimes we, we look in, in the last days like, all right, last day events or what have you, but sometimes I ask the question like, why should anybody, why should there be anybody hating on us now? Like, what, what are we doing so excellently at this point in time that would make somebody want to hate, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and therefore um, have something against us. So um, I just want to share kind of my story and just give a few principles that I think will help you all. I'll probably, I won't take long, I'll probably make it as short as possible. But then if y'all have any questions or what have you, like, feel free to, like, I'm an open book for sure. So for me, it started off kind of uh, graduating from high school. Now, I was two-time All-American in track and field when I was in high school. So, and I was an all-honor student, all that stuff. So I knew what excellence looked like in high school. Um, but then all of a sudden I went to um, Stony Brook University, and that's where all of a sudden I started experiencing challenges. Now, mind you, half of the challenges were my fault, all right? So when you don't go to class for half of the semester, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's your fault. And literally, I didn't realize, it's similar to the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, if you understand anything about the playoffs, like, it, it's, everything is on one level in the regular season, but you can't expect to get through the playoffs op operating with a regular season kind of mindset or, or effort. And, um, and the Spurs saw that, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Um, because of OKC. But... The challenge that I had is that I didn't realize once I matriculated from, um, from um, high school to college that the level of intensity was going to pick up. And, and when, you get to when I got to college, you know, no teachers were really checking up on me or anything like that. They were like, yo, you can do as you please. Like, as long as when you take the test, you, I, we could care less if you come to class. As long as you're able to pass the test when you get there, do whatever you want. Right now, of course, I was a sucker and fell for it. So I just went to class. I remember there was one time that I got to, to um, class and, you know, we just happened to be having a midterm. And I'm just like, oh, I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> I did this was economics 108. I remember that was one of my hardest classes. And man, and not only that, I was so tired that literally I'm trying to take the test and like, in every 15 minutes, I'm just seeing myself like waking up like, oh, snap, we still in the middle of a midterm. <laughs> you know? So, um, so like, thank God, somehow I was able to still graduate on time. How, I don't know, because I was like underneath the 2.0 for like my first year. Um, and after that, I mean, I had to go to summer school every single year just to pull that GPA up to where I could just at least graduate. Uh, then after that, man, I went to law school and ended up getting kicked out of law school. Why? Because I still hadn't really learned proper study habits, still hadn't really learned what it meant to be diligent, to work hard. And one of the things we still didn't really learn, like how do I hear, like where would, how do I figure out where God would have me to operate in, right? And not just go into these things that look like they just sound good. So um, graduated from there, but the thing about grad, I mean, it's not graduate, got kicked out of law school, but got kicked out of law school and still had to pay back $40,000. You know what I'm saying? For one year of law school. 
Um, and it's one thing if you graduate, but you have something to show for it. But when you don't have anything to show for having gone to law school, but you still got to pay that money back, that can be quite challenging. Um, you know, so I had, I had all of that going on. Then all of a sudden I found myself that, uh, found myself in a situation where I had been dating a young lady and because I hadn't been probably diligent as far as figuring out who I was and also dil diligent in figuring out who she was, found myself shortly after getting married to her going through a divorce, right? And we had children through the marriage, like I said, uh, in the sermon. And shortly after that, had to, having children, ended up losing my job. And so one of the things that I asked, like I was really seeking God's counsel about was like, yo, like what's the unifying thing? Like I'm, I'm here trying to be a good dude. I'm trying to be a good guy. Why are all these things that, why are all these bad things happening to me? And one of the things that God revealed to me, he was like, yo, you're not a bad person. As a matter of fact, in everything, you try to do the best that you can. But the problem that you have is that you're average. And you've settled for being average. And because you, like, some people, they fail because, like, they are actually, like, they just can't get it done. You can actually, you have all the talent, all the skill, all the ability in the world, but you just operate at average. And so that gave me the whole theme that that became my mantra, average is failure, because you have some people whose stories are stories of um, they started from the bottom, now they're here, right? Um, then you got other people's stories where it's kind of like, yo, they were just for real, just messed up. But my story is one where it's like, no, you actually had a pretty decent life, but you became complacent. And because you became complacent, you started experiencing failures in your life. And so... Um, these, this is just what I'm going to give y'all, just a couple of nuggets that help me to, because I can say now that while I'm not where I want to be, I'm no longer average, right? So, you know, becoming an author is not something that the average person does. Um, I graduated with a 3.8 GPA from Oakwood, right, with my master's in pastoral studies, no longer operating an average. Um, I've been able to speak at bunch of, in front of a bunch of different audiences or what have you. So I just want to help make sure that you all have at least a couple of tools that you can go forward with and uh, learn from my life and not settle for being average. That's cool.